this is Alex on the Jewish TV channel where you can be seen on the scene. Have you ever been asked by someone, how do you know the Bible is real? How do you know someone didn't just make it all up a long time ago? Maybe you've even asked those questions yourself. Well, one of the most powerful testimonies of the scriptures and their credibility is prophecy. So in this video, you'll learn that when you actually dive into Bible prophecy and study world history together, you can see how the scriptures are not only historically accurate, but they actually prophesied history before it happened, sometimes centuries if not millennia in advance. So hopefully by the end of this video, your faith in the scriptures and their credibility will be strengthened. And next time someone asks you, are you sure the Bible is true? You can say, yes, yes I am. The Bible prophesies many different historical events, succession of world powers, and more. Too many events for one video. So in this video, we're just going to focus on the prophecies concerning the Jews and Israel and how those prophecies actually played out in history. So let's go back in time by about 2700 years. Centuries have passed since the glory days of ancient Israel during the reign of King Solomon and the land has now been divided into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Morality and spiritual integrity have deteriorated and the Israelites have turned away from God, building idols and worshiping them even in the sacred temple. So in response to the idolatry of the Jews, God raises up prophets like Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and many others to prophesy over Israel and the Jews concerning their destiny. So God says through the prophet Jeremiah, From the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. I will pronounce my judgments on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshiping what their hands have made. And Jeremiah goes on to say, So I will give over all Judah to the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will carry them away as exiles to Babylon, and will slay them with the sword. Later on in Jeremiah's life, these prophecies literally came to pass when Assyria and then later Babylon conquered Israel from the north and besieged the city of Jerusalem. And afterward, the king of Babylon took thousands of Jews as slaves and carried them off to Babylon where they lived in exile. After this, another scripture rings true as Nehemiah writes, But they were disobedient and rebelled against you. They turned their backs on your law. They killed your prophets who had warned them in order to turn them back to you. They committed awful blasphemies. So you delivered them into the hands of their enemies who oppressed them. But when they were oppressed, they cried out to you. From heaven you heard them, and in your great compassion you gave them deliverers, who rescued them from the hand of their enemies. Not only did this happen during the exodus from Egypt, but decades after the Jews were exiled to Babylon, the Persian Empire conquered the Babylonians and actually gave the Jews the freedom to return back to Jerusalem to rebuild it. But when the Jews made it back to Jerusalem, they went right back to the sinful acts that put them in exile in the first place. So the scripture in Nehemiah continues. But as soon as they were at rest, they again did what was evil in your sight. Then you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies so that they ruled over them. This is interesting because Nehemiah is writing in past tense. As many Old Testament prophecies are written in as if they are prophesying from the future. But this prophecy is something that continued for many generations to come as empire after empire and nation after nation occupied the territory of the Holy Land and ruled over the Jews. For the next 2300 years, give or take, Israel would be occupied by Persia, Greece, Rome, the Arabs, the Crusaders, the Ottoman Empire, and then finally the British Empire. So when God said he would deliver them into the hands of their enemies, he wasn't joking. As a result of enemy occupation, another prophecy of Jeremiah was fulfilled in the ages that followed. I will scatter them among nations that neither they nor their ancestors have known, and I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. This is a pretty powerful prophecy because over the course of history, the Jews were literally scattered to virtually every part of the planet from Africa to Asia to the Americas and all throughout Europe. 
and they were also hated and persecuted almost everywhere they went, as the prophecy also mentions. This scattering was known as the Jewish diaspora, or dispersion. Ezekiel also prophesied the kind of wrath the Jews would continue to have in all the places they would be scattered to. Alas, because of all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they fall by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. He who is far off shall die of pestilence, and he who is near shall fall by the sword, and he who is left and is preserved shall die of famine. This is an interesting prophecy because the Jews that stayed near the land of Israel were intensely persecuted by their enemy occupiers, especially the Romans. And persecuted is just a nice way of saying they were executed on a daily basis. Roman persecution reached a climax in the first century AD when they sieged Jerusalem. The temple and the holy city were destroyed for the second time in history, and in the process, over a million people perished, including hundreds of thousands of Jews. After their city was destroyed, many of the surviving Jews ended up far off in Europe. Then, over a thousand years later, the Black Plague ravages Europe. Millions upon millions die from this disease, including the Jews, as the prophecy states, He who is far off shall die of pestilence. But in the midst of this devastating epidemic, a rumor spreads that the plague is the result of the Jews poisoning the wells, which results in a massive wave of anti-Semitism and Jewish persecution. On top of that, there was also food shortages and widespread famine in Europe at the time which led to a higher mortality rate due to their weakened immune systems. At this point, the Jews are battling disease and famine on one side while running from the sword and persecution on the other. An instance of another prophecy by Ezekiel, one third of you shall die of the pestilence and be consumed with famine in your midst, and one third shall fall by the sword all around you and I will scatter another third to all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them." In total, it's estimated that roughly one third of Europe was wiped out by the plague, including many of the Jews living there, once again fulfilling the prophecy of Jeremiah. They will die of deadly diseases. There will be so many dead that no one will bury them or grieve for them. They will be like dung scattered on the ground. Others will perish from war and famine, and their corpses will feed the vultures and wild beasts of the earth. Speaking of war, if we fast forward about 600 years to the 20th century, we will witness sadly the most deadly time for the Jews in modern history. World War II breaks out and the Jews are being blamed for everything and targeted by Hitler and his army of Nazis. One by one, the Jews are carried off to concentration camps and execution sites where roughly 6 million of them are brutally murdered. The Jews are one of the most persecuted people groups in history, but at this point, their persecution had reached an all-time high, so much so that a new word was invented to describe the atrocities. Genocide. Today we remember this as the Holocaust. But, as tragic as World War II and the Holocaust were, something incredible and miraculous was birthed from these tragedies. After the war ended, many world powers started to have sympathy for the Zionists, who advocated for the modern establishment of Israel as a safe place for the Jews to live in peace, free from persecution. So the British handed control of the land over to the United Nations who, long story short, cut out a massive piece of the Holy Land known as Palestine at the time and designated it as the State of Israel. Then on May 14, 1948, the Jews officially declared their independence as a sovereign nation, and even America recognized their declaration on the same day. After thousands of years, Israel had finally become an official nation. Many believe this to be a fulfillment of a verse in Isaiah 66. Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Now looking back from the future, we know the answer to that question. Yes, apparently a country can be born in a day. Before we go on to what happened afterwards, there was another prophecy that should be mentioned in this video. Prior to the destruction of Jerusalem, Ezekiel prophesied against the land itself when he said, I will make you a waste and a reproach among the nations that are all around you, in the sight of all who pass by. 
Then they will know that I am the Lord when I have made the land a desolation and a waste because of all their abominations that they have committed. After the city was destroyed and the Jews were scattered, the Holy Land went on to be a dry and desolate desert for all the centuries that followed. So much so that even Mark Twain, the famous author, noted how barren and unsightly the Holy Land was when he actually visited in 1867. This is what he wrote in his book, Innocence Abroad, after reaching what was known as Palestine at the time. Of all the lands there are for dismal scenery, I think Palestine must be the prince. The hills are barren, they are dull of color, they are unpicturesque in shape. The valleys are unsightly deserts fringed with a feeble vegetation that has an expression about it of being sorrowful and despondent. With those images of the land in mind, what happens next is nothing short of a miracle. Going back to post-World War II, the long-awaited prophecies of restoration begin to unfold. After Israel had become a nation in 1948, Jews from all over the world started flocking back to Israel, beginning the fulfillment of the writings of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been gathered, and I will give you the land of Israel. Then I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. After all the Jews started coming back to the Holy Land and the population started growing exponentially, a myriad of prophecies started to come to pass and are still being fulfilled to this day. Israel's modern international city and financial hub, Tel Aviv, was founded in the early 20th century and by the end of World War II, what once was nothing but miles of sand dunes had been transformed into a thriving metropolis with over 100,000 inhabitants. Today Israel is home to millions of people. As the decades passed, Israel became a tech hub and an agricultural innovator, completely reshaping the terrain. Israel has since been transformed from a dry and desolate wasteland into miles and miles of lush green pastures and plantations. Nations used to scoff at the disparity of Israel, but now they look to her as a leader in agricultural technology. Deserts are blooming, massive cities have been constructed, and the economy ranks among the highest in the world, making over a billion dollars yearly just on their diamond exports alone. God has done and is continuing to do what he said he would do all those generations ago. On the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited, and the waste places shall be rebuilt, and the land that was desolate shall be tilled, instead of being the desolation that it was, in the sight of all who pass by. And they will say, this land that was desolate has become like a garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left all around you shall know that I am the Lord. I have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I am the Lord, I have spoken, and I will do it. Today, Israel has so many resources and produces so much fruit that they now have to export much of their production to other countries. And now Israel is known as a nation that turned deserts into plantations. In days to come, Jacob shall take root. Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots and fill the whole world with fruit. And I will provide for them renowned plantations, so that they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land, and no longer suffer the reproach of nations. Today, despite Israel being as prosperous as it is, it's still surrounded by nations that hate Israel and hate the Jews and want nothing more than to see them destroyed. Palestine in particular is still fighting over the land. But besides being encompassed by all these countries, Israel continues to grow and prosper, fulfilling all those ancient prophecies in the process. This is Alex on the Jewish TV channel where you can be seen on the scene.